Observing everything taking place in the world, I've asked myself whether I and my loved ones are ready for an unlikely but more than ever possible global catastrophe caused by large-scale hostilities or even nuclear war. When the world goes into chaos, we will be forced to leave our homes and survive in the city or in the wilderness, with every man for himself and no helping hand from a neighbor. A couple of weeks ago I started researching a lot and picked out the most important things that would help me and my loved ones survive in any conditions. It is likely that you will not be alone, but at least with your family, so in those situations when someone needs to make an outing somewhere or you just need to split up, you'll definitely need to keep communications between each other to be aware of what is happening and to warn each other of possible danger. By that time, cell phone connection may be long gone. So in that case, the only option is radio communication. I chose this Baofang portable radio, which is very well proven among radio amateurs and has a number of advantages. Thanks to its well-functioning removable antenna, it provides a strong connection up to a few kilometers in rough terrain and up to 10 kilometers in open space. It also has a built-in flashlight, you may use it to illuminate the road or to find something. Another important thing is a built-in radio, where authorities can broadcast some important information. In our family, we also have these two simple radios, which may be connected with each other. But if you know their frequency, or just scan airwaves, you may connect this Baofeng radio to them and work on the same frequency with them. Breaker, breaker, one night. Moreover, you can try to listen to people around you, which can warn you of impending danger or help to understand those people's intentions. This is not just a Chinese mass-produced device, but a high-quality working device. Unlike the yellow radios, this one has good lithium-ion battery and one of the most important reasons why I chose it is that it charges from a USB port. But then there is the issue of charging this and the other gadgets in Wilderness, where there is absolutely no electricity. The perfect option would be this portable solar panel for 28 watts. It consists of four solar panels of medium size, which are folded into a book. Yes, you may find smaller books, but the time they need to charge a device is way too long, while sitting in one place waiting for the battery to fill up would be a stupid waste of precious time. Opening the fastener, we see a hidden pocket containing a block of two normal USD ports and one port for fast charging. In good weather conditions, a panel of this size can produce enough power to charge two or even three gadgets at the same time. Although when the weather is cloudy and the sun is behind the clouds, the charger produces about 40 milliamps, which is not a lot. But as soon as the sun comes out from behind the clouds, the panel begins to provide almost 7 times more energy at 5 volts. In case you connect it to the fast charging port, you will activate the 9 volts mode, so the power bank will be charged incredibly fast. If the situation does not allow you to wait in one spot, but your device needs charging, you can hitch the panel on your backpack. Sure, its efficiency will decrease, but it's better than nothing. This is actually a very important device, able to charge not only your radio, but also your power bank, flashlight or smartphone, which doesn't need an internet connection to work as a navigator. Let's move on the question of feeding. The third thing I would take with me is this compact grill the size of a large book. Now you'll see why I chose it. In just a couple of seconds, it becomes quite a big camping device for cooking. I have been using it for a while now, so let me show you how it works. I put some dry twigs inside and light them. The cone-shaped bottom prevents the fire from falling apart. So as the twigs burn, they shift into one pile, where each one of them burns completely. Such a campfire doesn't require any special place. You may build it anywhere, including on snow. Moreover, 
Holding it by the legs, you can move it all together wherever you want. And the quality stainless steel will not rust nor burn. First, we put the grill this way. So we can place a pan of water over the coals, which will warm it up without leaving any carbon residue. At the same time with this construction, we still may toss sticks into the fire, which may give us heat and light at night. The water came to a boil in a couple of minutes, we poured the buckwheat into it and in a few moments we got a great garnish. In the remaining coals we cooked some potatoes. Meat in survival conditions is rather a luxury, so people will hunt everything that moves and, I guess, common pigeon will be among the first in line. The grill is convenient to roast any food, you won't need to put the meat on sticks, keep it over the fire or invite anything else. It turned out very tasty. With this grill you may cook for a few people quickly and easily, after which you just throw away the coals, wipe it a little and pack everything back. Moreover, this grill is designed so that the dirty parts stay inside, while outside of the grill is still nice and clean. Without wasting any time clearing the grill, you put everything back in the case and continue your way. After all, Time, in a survival situation, along with food and water, is invaluable resource that must be spent wisely. Another extremely important thing for survival is a strong rope. I was surprised to find out that $1.50 is enough to order from AliExpress 15 meters of this paracord rope, which we will use in our next video in this series. It consists of several really strong strands in a small braid. Right away we decided to test it for strength, as this is the most essential parameter. Surprisingly, the thin rope easily withstood the strength of an adult man. Sure, it's not the full list of things we have prepared to be able to survive a disaster, which hopefully won't happen. But it's really important for me to see in the comments your opinions and advice on what else can we take in our post-apocalyptic backpacks. I'm sure that there are many incredibly intelligent people in the audience and you have a lot of great ideas which haven't occurred to us, which could be implemented in the next video in the series.